Good morning and thank you once again for joining me as we come together to start our day in the presence of the Lord. Some great news to tell you. Um, the Bishop of Southwark has said that we may once again as clergy go into our churches to pray privately as well as to stream our services. And so on Sunday, the Eucharist will be streamed from St Mary's, um, albeit on my own, I'm afraid. Sadly, the church continues to remain closed to everyone except myself. But let's continue to pray and hope that we will very soon be able to worship there together. I'd like to read you a story to begin our time together. Toad bakes some biscuits. These biscuits smell so good, he said, as he put one into his mouth. Oh, they taste even better. Toad ran to Frog's house. Frog, Frog, he cried, taste these biscuits that I have made. Frog ate one. These are the best biscuits that I have ever eaten, said Frog. Frog and Toad then ate one after another together. You know, Toad, said Frog, with his mouth full, I think we should stop. You are so right, said Toad, but let's just eat one last biscuit and then we'll stop. Frog and Toad ate just one more. Oh, but there were so many left in the bowl. Frog said Toad, let's just eat one very last biscuit and then we will stop. So Frog and Toad ate one very last biscuit. We must stop eating, cried Toad as he ate another one. Yes, said Frog, reaching for another himself. We need willpower. What's willpower? asked Toad. Willpower is trying hard not to do something that you really, really want to do, said Frog. You mean like trying hard not to eat all of these biscuits? Right, said Frog. Frog put the biscuits into a box. There, he said, now we won't eat any more of them. But we can open the box, said Toad. That's so true, said Frog. So Frog tied some string around the box. There, he said, now we will not eat any more biscuits. But we could cut the string and open the box, said Toad. That is true, said Frog. So Frog got a ladder and put the box up high on the shelf. There, said Frog, now we will not eat any more biscuits. But we could climb the ladder Take the box down from the shelf, cut the string, and then open the box, said Toad. Oh, that's true, said Frog. So Frog climbed the ladder, took down the box from the shelf, cut the string, and opened the box. He then took the box outside and, shouting with a loud voice, said, Birds, here are all the biscuits. Birds came from everywhere. They picked up all the biscuits in their beaks and flew away. Now we have no more biscuits to eat, said Toad sadly. Not even one, said Frog. But we do have lots of willpower. You can keep the lot, said Frog. I'm off to bake a cake. A story which perhaps reflects your temptation as it reflects mine from time to time. The desire not to give in may be there, but how often we make our lives harder by keeping those things that tempt us so near. Wrapped up, covered over, but still within reaching distance. Today's second reading takes us into the wilderness where Jesus was tempted for 40 days. That's a long time to be in the wilderness. And that's as long actually as we have been in lockdown. I don't know about you, but I've certainly given in to that extra glass or two of wine, maybe that extra second, third or even fourth bag of crisps in this lockdown. These are minor and inconsequential things in the grand scheme of the potential seriousness of what giving in to temptation can lead to. But it is so easy to let down our guard and to give in. Jesus, of course, didn't give in when the devil tempted him with those things, and I'm so glad that he didn't. So that when we are weak, we can turn to his strength, know his forgiveness and his power to start afresh all over again.
So let us pray together. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our first reading, our psalm today, is Psalm 118. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called upon the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side I do not fear, for what can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in trouble on those who hate me. For it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in human beings. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. For the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. For the right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. For I shall not die, but live. And I will recount the deeds of the Lord. For the Lord has punished me severely but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. For this is the gate of the Lord and the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. For the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. We beseech you, give us your success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, for we will bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. For you are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. 
。阿门。Our Old Testament reading is taken from Book of Exodus, chapter thirty-four, beginning at verse one. The Lord said to Moses, "Cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you." And do not let any one be seen throughout all the mountain, and do not let flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones. He rose early in the morning and went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, "The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation." And Moses quickly bowed his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, "If I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray that you will go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance." He said, "I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people, I will perform marvels such as never been performed in all the earth." Or in any nation, and all the people among you who shall live and see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I shall do with you. The Lord said to Moses, "Write these words in accordance with these words that I have made a covenant with you and with Israel." And he was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant. The Ten Commandments. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining; they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them the commandment that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out, he told the Israelites what had been commanded. The Israelites would then see that the face of Moses and the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again, until he went in to speak with the Lord. Today's canticle is called the Song of Christ's Glory. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. For Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. And bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And so our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, 
chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I can give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. For I have called you by name, and you are mine. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. I'm going to read to you today from Jesus Calling. Don't be so hard on yourself. I can bring good even out of your mistakes. Your finite mind tends to look backward, longing to undo decisions that you have come to regret. But this is such a waste of time and energy, leading only to frustration. Instead of floundering in the past, release your mistakes to me. Look to me in trust, anticipating that my infinite creativity can weave both good choices and bad into a lovely design. Because you are human, you will continue to make mistakes. Thinking that you should live an error-free life is symptomatic of pride. Your failures can be a source of blessing, humbling you and giving you empathy for other people in their weaknesses. Best of all, failure highlights your dependence upon me. I am able to bring beauty out of the morals of your mistake. Trust me and watch to see what I can do. So let us pray.
Father, today we come to you with a repentant heart. Lord, please forgive us for the times that we have been superficial and hypocritical in our spiritual life and our walk with you. There are times, Lord, that we have even been defiant in our desire to do what we know is contrary to our faith. When we have wanted to be in control ourselves rather than surrendering to the grace of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we so need your grace from this day on to continue to work out our salvation with fear and trembling against the enemy of our soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please, Lord, forgive our prideful, stubborn self-will our strong flesh nature and all of its desires which so often war against your spirit within us. Please help us to surrender our life to you. Have mercy on us, Lord. Cleanse and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit. Please give us the grace and power to walk in a manner worthy of the holy call for which you sacrificed your life to redeem us for your eternal glory. Lord, this morning and all mornings, as we face the day daunted by expectations that others place upon us, weighed down at times by burdens, unsure of outcomes, sometimes opposed, sometimes alone, Lord, please remind us that you faced all this and more when you were in the wilderness. Help us, Lord, to lose those chains that bind us. Help us to rise above and beyond the troubles of this world and to know your peace and your embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray this day for our families and friends here in Sandersted. We pray especially for Ilsa, for Eve Pierce, Fiona and Eleanor McCann, for Richard and Margaret Farrell, David Thomas, Colin Burtwell, Kim Brown, Fiona Delia, Maggie Glover, Joy Foster, and Ben and Tanya Clark. And in a moment we bring before God the names of those who have asked us to pray for them, especially today. Father, as our government looks for ways to begin lifting the lockdown, we pray, Lord, that you would give our Prime Minister and his Cabinet wisdom. We pray, Lord, that you would make us mindful of the choices that we make. Help us, Lord, to always put others first. Defend us, Lord, from fear create in us, Lord, a perfect peace that transcends all understanding, a peace, Lord, that guards our hearts and our minds in you. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord give you grace to grow in holiness, to take up your cross and to follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you on your journey now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Enjoy your day.